everyone welcome back to a little literally love i'm glad you're all with me i'm shelby um today's video is going to be another recommendations video i've actually done a lot of these this month it's mostly because this month october just has like my favorite romances that just feel like they fit like the theme of the month and I've just been really vibing with it so I decided it would be a really great time to do a general like dark romance recommendations video. Dark romances are actually some of my favorite romances. Some of my all-time favorite books are really dark books um, and I think part of that is just I feel like dark romance can go other places that traditional contemporary romance can't and I also feel like a lot of times they dive a lot deeper into emotions either emotional turmoil um, there's different there's strife of some sort that might be going on um, there's a lot of different reasons but it just it plays so well and it tugs at my heart and and mm, I just I love it so much um, so before we get in to all of my romance recommendations um, I do have a little bit of a cold again I'm so upset there's been a bunch of stuff going around right now and I don't know if it's a cold necessarily or if I just have really bad allergies since it's fall time and like the leaves are changing and falling off the trees so I know allergies are really bad right now but <clears throat> I'm gonna do my best to get through this video but yeah it kind of sucks anyway I did I have these all kind of like broken up um like the first few books that I'm going to talk about are going to be more on like the lighter side of dark romances and then as we get through it we're going to go into more of like the darker like the darkest of the dark kind of romances and I will preface that by saying um what I may consider light dark others may not consider light dark um it is all very subjective it's just to me those were not as dark as what they can get um so just kind of take that with a grain of salt if you have never read a dark romance probably and you want to dive in maybe start with some of those lighter dark romance recommendations and then even if you read them you may say that those are not for you that those are still too dark for you um and then you know whatever maybe even like my dark dark romance ones um some of you may think that oh those are actually not that dark to me so like I said it's all subjective um take that as you will so starting out um we're gonna start with more of the lighter dark romances the not as dark um these I think would be really great for somebody that's like new to dark romance um so I'm starting out with the Devil's Night series by Penelope Douglas this is a classic series that's everywhere and I think it's also a classic good intro to dark romance series um this starts with corrupt this is revolves around these four guys um, around halloween so perfect for october um and um the first book corrupt it's kind of bully romance-esque um there's rika and she's kind of entranced by her boyfriend's older brother um the timelines kind of go back and forth between when she is in high school and then later on in i think she's in like college maybe or maybe a little bit after that it's been a while since i've actually read these um but i did really enjoy them and i know lots of people really enjoy them anyway so these four boys on devil's night which is like halloween um they basically wear these different masks and go around town and do whatever they want um and the town is kind of entranced by them they let them get away with a lot of different things and she's intrigued by him and wants to follow one of the the guy that she's with in this one and um but something happens and so then later on in like the current timeline, he is wanting to get revenge against her for wronging him and his friends. 
um, and it takes a little bit before you find out like what she did, what happened, um, but it does turn into a romance. So there's a lot of, there's kind of like that animosity between them, hate to love. Um, like I said, it's bully-esque and there's definitely some dark dark themes um, in this one and then throughout the series. So each book of the series um, is about one of the other like members of like the four guy friend group. And I just think it's a really great series. Um, I think it's probably one of Penelope Douglas's like best works. I haven't read all of her stuff, but it was really good. And I think it's really good as a starter. Um, another one that's probably a really good starter, honestly, a lot of mafia romance is dark romance. I mean, it's, it's organized crime. There's crime in it. Um, so I think a lot of mafia works well for dark romance and I think a lot of mafia I mean there's some mafia that tend to get even like really dark um but there's some that I think are really great starters um like Cora Riley's whole mafia universe series um and I can't remember what if I remember I'll put a picture up um but I can't remember what all the um her first series is um which I think would be a really good starter like late dark once you get into the Kimura Chronicles though which is like a spin-off series of her like first mafia series that tends to get more like medium maybe borderline even like darker dark but her first series with like the Italian mafia and between the Chicago and New York, New York families that one there's like the arranged marriage all kinds of stuff like that I think is a pretty good like intro another one which I think is just absolutely fabulous dark romance but is really good as an intro to dark romance is going to be Sophie Lark's Brutal Birthright series starting with Brutal Prince so this is another mafia series um and this takes place with um each book is a different character um within these two different families um there's kind of a feud between these families in Chicago um, between the Irish mob and the Italians um so we have I think it's Ava Ada um she is the daughter of the Italian uh, mob boss and she decides to crash a party at the Irish family and she ends up accidentally setting their library on fire so then the oldest son of the Irish mob boss guy whatever um in retaliation goes and um breaks her brother's leg and it's just gonna start this all-out war between them so these two families like the, the heads of the families get together and they decide to have an arranged marriage between the two of them because they don't want this escalating any more than it has um they want to secure peace between the two clans mafia clans um and this is just it's absolutely hilarious um this is a really great intro into sophie lark's world as well um she is one of those authors her writing is just very consumable and by what i mean by that it's just it's very easy to read and not in a um I don't really know how to say it not that she's not intelligent because she's very intelligent her writing is so good but it's just the way I don't even know how to describe it the way that she writes it just sucks you in and you don't want to put her stuff down it's just so easy to read um and then she also has little things with like I think she's got a playlist in here that you can look up um yes she has like little QR codes where you can like look up all her stuff like she's just she's a genius and I think this is a really great dark romance series to get into. I think that's going to be it for more of my lighter stuff. Um, the next one I feel like is kind of in between maybe like a light to more of like a medium dark romance. Um, that's going to be Fairy Dale by Veronica Lancet. This is one of my favorite books that I've read this year. I absolutely love this. This is actually a fantasy romance. It is also gothic, um, but it's definitely dark romance. And I would also consider this an epic romance. This book is like 800 pages, something like that. And so it takes a while. Um, there's definitely like a slow burn to this because of how much stuff is happening. Um, but this basically, 
well excuse me there is no basically to it um this is a very complex story um there's different timelines going on and different characters so there's a lot going on to this but it's so good. I love it. Um, we start off with our heroine. Um, she is like a teacher at an orphanage because that's where she, like her mama died. So she grew up in this orphanage and she gets this letter that her biological father has passed away and has left something in his will for her. So she has to, in order to claim that, she has to go to the town that he was in um, and be sit for like the reading of his will to be able to claim her inheritance. She had no idea about this guy, had no clue who her father was, but when she gets to this town, it is very strange. Um, it gives me almost Pleasant Valley vibes if you've ever seen that movie where it, it seems like everything is all hunky-dory on the surface, um, but then things are not actually as they seem. Um, she discovers that this is a town of rival, rival, rivalry, right, I can't even say that word, um, rivalry, witch families and she kind of gets caught up in the middle of all of this mess of this back and forth um fighting that is going on um and she meets one guy that she's kind of entranced by but also kind of scared by and then she's also been having these dreams about when she gets there she starts having these dreams about this girl in like the 1800s and her getting wooed by this mysterious man and she starts to become infatuated by this dream man as well um and that's all I'm gonna say because I just there's so many different surprises that happen in this um but it is dark um very early on into the book there is some murders that happen um, and they're pretty gruesome, but then, yeah, there's just, there's a whole lot of stuff going on in this, but it's so good and I love it. Um, so now like within like the more medium dark romance category, um, I have some more recommendations for that. I think Karina Halley is a pretty good, like medium dark romance author for some of her more like dark romance series. Now I haven't read, she has like a horror series that's like 10 books long. I haven't read that one so I don't really know where on the spectrum that one would fall um but I have read some of her like dark fantasy romances um so she has a few um, vampire ones there's Black Sunshine which is a college student um and she discovers that she is I think she's like half vampire and she's like coming into like becoming a vampire and she meets this other vampire um so there's that one and that's like a whole series then she also has blood orange which is like a dracula retelling um and it is a like academic kind of setting um so that one um those are pretty good intro or into some of her stuff too. Um, I really enjoyed A Ship of Bones and Teeth, which she released, I think, earlier this year. Um, this is another dark fantasy romance, but this is a Little Mermaid and Pirates of the Caribbean retelling, um, where the Little Mermaid, she, like, you know, she becomes a human, but then her husband that she ends up getting it to um, is very abusive towards her, and she just wants to find the sea witch that turned her and get her um her tail back and become a mermaid again um and she ends up getting she's on a ship with her husband and they get captured by pirates um and the captain is also trying to find this sea witch um to get revenge against his family being murdered and yeah, so there's lots of dark stuff in this. There's also like monster sex in that one. Um, lots of crazy things, but I very much enjoyed it. She also has just written Hollow and then the sequel Legend, uh, I think has just come out too. 
that's another dark romance retelling of um, Sleepy Hollow and I believe it's also fantasy romance. I haven't read that one yet but it is on my TBR to read so I'm excited to read that. Um, and then I have some other just kind of like other like books that I think kind of fit in the medium dark romance area. Um, so we have Pretty Little Tease by A.G. Merlin. This is another favorite from this year that I read. This is more of a like romantic suspense, romantic thriller sort of book about this girl. She's in college and she's taking this like elective just to kind of finish up some of her credits. She picks this photography class. Um, the teacher is kind of a curmudgeon. He's a hard ass. And the his TA for the class is very much a golden retriever kind of guy. And he wants to help her through this class so that she can pass. And then... <laughs> But then she's also needing money to help pay for things for her last like year of college and she starts doing this like being a cam girl and she starts talking to a couple of people in there and then there's also these like mysterious murders that have been taking place on campus and the victims of these murders just so happen to look like her roommate. So it's very mysterious lots of things going on don't want to give too much away because but it's it's a great ride um and then we have the halloween boy series by cat blackthorn starting with ghost ghost is actually the only one that i've read so far this gives sort of similar vibes to devil's night series by um penelope douglas but this is a paranormal romance um we have these four guys again that are friends and they are trapped in this town and our heroine is somehow Abel has come into this town and they are all entranced by her. Honestly, all of the supernatural creatures of this town are entranced by her and they are trying to figure out why. And she has come to this town because she is on the run um, because her stepfather was abusive but he was I think sent to jail but then he keeps sending her like mysterious letters so she's very scared by this and running away and yeah there's a lot of other like spooky stuff that is happening in this one um so I like I said I haven't read the rest of the books of the series to know if like if things get darker um, than what they are in the first book. Then getting into a little more closer to like dark dark romances. Um, I would say this book is maybe in between the medium and the dark dark romances. That's gonna be Vibe by Liza James. This is a sapphic romance um, about a girl. She ran away from a cult and she is living with her boyfriend and her boyfriend and their friend decide they want to go to a strip club. And while there, she has this immediate connection to the dancer. And the dancer has also had some dark things happen in her past, but the dancer and this girl, they, like I said, they have an immediate connection and um, they end up getting together. So there's lots of dark elements in this one. I remember there is like murder and violence. There's cheating also going on in this one. Um, so I think, I don't remember it being like some of my dark, dark romances. I remember why I thought they were so dark because they were really hard for me to read. I don't really remember that from Vibe, but when I was reading my review of it, it got pretty dark so I that's why I'm kind of putting it maybe in the middle <clears throat> and then we're gonna get to the darkest of the dark dark romances um these are ones that I think pretty well all around people consider very dark romances um these are ones that honestly I absolutely love but it they all had scenes in them that I nearly had to put my book down that they were very hard for me to read and get through but I'm glad I did it because like these are some of my all-time favorite books um 
So if you want to get into dark dark romances, some books that I would recommend or authors. So like H.G. Carlton is a dark romance author. Um, she has the quintessential cat and mouse duet that everybody raves about. That is what um, my t-shirt that I'm wearing today is from. So starting with Haunting Annaline and then you get Hunting Annaline. Um, the first book of the series is about this writer and she is living in her late grandmother's house. Um, she I think is trying to renovate it maybe. Um, and she finds out that she has a stalker of this guy, this vigilante kind of guy um, became obsessed with her and is stalking her and while she's in this house she also found this journal from her grandmother um, and it kind of becomes a little bit of like a murder mystery with her reading her grandmother's journals because her grandmother also had a stalker so there's that and then hunting Adeline haunting Adeline lands, lands, ends on a cliffhanger Hunting Adeline takes a completely different turn and Hunting Adeline is where I feel like Haunting Adeline I feel like could be more like medium dark. Hunting Adeline is definitely dark 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 dark. Um, there is a theme throughout both with like sex trafficking <coughs> which is a topic that I feel is very dark, especially with some of the, the scenes that were portrayed in that one. Um, so be forewarned with that. Another one of hers is going to be Does It Hurt? This is a standalone. And this is a dark romance. Um, we have our heroine is, um, she is a thief. She steals people's identities and takes their money. And she tries to do that to this I can't remember if he's a fisherman or he just like studies sharks or something um, because they like kind of hooked up and she stole his stuff and then he finds her again and is like hey I want to go out on a date and he knows that she stole from him and he's pissed off about it and so he takes her out on her he takes her out on his boat again but then they get caught up in this storm and get marooned on this island and the island is very mysterious there is a lighthouse with a lighthouse keeper I think is what they're called that lives there and they have to try to figure out what is going on at, at this mysterious island um, because the lighthouse keeper says that shipment from like a boat or a mainland um, only comes like every few months. So they have to just kind of wait it out. Um, <clears throat> I feel like this one delved more into like romantic suspense territory. This one I couldn't put down. I was so fascinated by the whole plot and the mysteriousness of mysteriousness of what was going on and I really loved this one for both the cat and mouse duet and does it hurt also highly 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 recommend the um, audiobooks for those they both have duet narration and I really love that um, and that really helped to make a really good story I feel like then another really great dark dark romance series is going to be the Hades Hangman series by Tilly Cole starting with It Ain't Me Babe. Um, this it has like eight books long or something. This is a motorcycle club romance um, but it starts off with our heroine has escaped from a cult again kind of like with a vibe and she runs into um, this biker club and the president remembers seeing her as a child and he's never forgotten about her but he could never find her and now here she is and they're pissed off about this whole cult um it's just there's so much going on with this, but it just, it's such a beautiful story. There's definitely lots of dark themes in this, especially later on in the series, um, especially when you get to like the third book, because that is um, both the hero and the heroine of those stories both had very traumatic past, especially with sexual assault and abuse as children. 
so that's why this is a very 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 dark romance um and then also like torture and there's murder that happens um this goes into a little bit like they said that's a cult um there's some kind of like there's sex trafficking of a sorts that happens um <clears throat> And then, like I said, there is definite lots of things involving sexual assault, um, and that is shown, a lot of it is shown on page. So take that, again, with a grain of salt, you know, know your triggers. Uh, but this, uh, this series has some of my absolute favorite, like, redemption arcs characters, character development, love stories. These characters are just, uh they're near and dear to my heart. I love them so much. And I think she's going to, there's, she's still writing books for this series. She just hasn't gotten around to the next one yet. And I'm anxiously awaiting the next one of this book, of the series because I love it so much. And then last but not least is another author that I think is just hands down a quintessential dark romance person to go to. And that's going to be Pam Godwin. I don't think I've read a single book from her that was not dark. There are some of her books that are a little bit less dark. Like I think Lessons in Sin is a little bit like less dark. Um, but one of my favorites is Dark Notes. This is a teacher student romance, a high school student. Um, and this girl who is from the wrong side of the tracks gets the scholarship to this very elite high school to play piano and he is her piano teacher uh, there's also lots of um there's sexual assault in this one that is shown on on page <coughs> but their love story i just i love this so much and then the other one that i would recommend this is this deliver um, the Deliver series and I have like the very very pretty uh, um, bound up uh, because I think there's nine books in this series so this is the first three books in one um, but Deliver is probably the series as a whole is probably one of the darkest series books I have ever read this whole series evolves around um, sex trafficking um, our very first book of this is about this heroine and she is a sex trafficker and she picks up this, I think he's in college, college football person and she takes him and kidnaps him and is training him to become a sex slave so that they can sell her. And then you realize that she is also kind of a slave herself. She has somebody over her that if she does not do what this guy says he will hurt her in some way so just right off of the gate the very first book you know this is very dark very 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 dark um and i've heard really good things about it so i know i was very hesitant to get into it <clears throat> Especially because the first book is very much more of a, the woman is the dominant in this situation and the man is the more of the submissive. And that's not usually what I like in my romances, but this just, their story just hooked me and I loved it. Like the first Deliver and Vanquish hands down some of my all-time favorite books that I have ever read just because of the emotional impact that they had on me just unforgettable but like I said these are very 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 dark books so just be careful but yeah so those are gonna be all of my dark romance recommendations I honestly really especially when it's done well and it's written well it really plays with your emotions and that's part of like why I just I gobble up dark romance now if I'm gonna read like the deliver books I can't read them like back to back to back and I need some like little fluff in between but I still just I love them they're just some of my absolute favorite books so 
If you have some other dark romance recommendations for me to check out, please leave them down in the comment down below. If you like this, this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I really appreciate it. Otherwise, yeah, I think I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye guys.